Hello viewers, welcome to my Doctor Who themed YouTube channel, Who Adventures. And in this video, I'm going to do a book review of the Doctor Who Pattern Book by Joy Gammon. Now, this has come up in conversation whilst discussing the John Pertry recipe book. So I had to acquire a copy so I could review it and this cost me 14.99 so it's quite a lot seeing as this was published in 1984 but it is in pristine condition so hang on yeah copyright 1984 I would have been four years old and I did wear lots of knitted items so this is how to make well um, some knitting like jumpers and things what you can knit and some things what you can sew together so I'll read the back of it for you the Doctor Who pattern book contains a terrific variety of clothes toys, cushions, bags and other desirable objects to knit and sew based on the ever popular BBC television programmes the canine shoulder bag the TARDIS sleeping bag and the console floor cushion are just a few examples of Joy Gammon's fertile imagination and Romana's sailor top, Adric's anorak and Peter Davison's cricket jumper are destined to be fashion favourites for years to come. The patterns are clearly and simply explained. There is even a how to knit section with straightforward diagrams for the complete beginner and the book is well illustrated with line drawings and 24 pages of colour photographs. So that's the back of the book and that's the front of the book. We have a lovely picture of lots of action men with their Doctor Who outfits on. Ah, so they look really cool, all in their Doctor Who outfits. So you have the instruction and then the how to knit. So it's all the instructions for how to actually get started knitting. and how to cast on and knit one pair of one and all that stuff. And now we have a lovely picture of a lovely Doctor Who knitted jumper. It looks really stylish. And he seems to be holding the Red Dwarf spaceship, which I got a bit confused by. But it does look very much like the Red Dwarf spaceship. And there's also a guide to how to use the sewing patterns and um, also information about materials and things. And another picture, dashing, so dashing that is, very sexy picture. And handmade salary. It's looks awesome. <laughs> This photo is so cool, it's so cute. I don't know if I'll be making anything because I'm not very good at knots and I get very confused about which way round things go and all that stuff. So I'm not going to read out the pattern instructions, I'll just read out the bits about Doctor Who. Diamond Jumper. This flamboyant title logo from the Doctor Who series, see chart on page 26 is often in the colours used here but you can of course use others if you wish. The lettering is often black or plain primary colour and the lettering only without the diamond also evokes the programme. If you plan to alter the chart in this way remember to choose colours which contrast enough with the background to keep the lettering legible. legible. The diamond shape is about 8 inches high and 8 inches across and placed on this jumper at about underarm height. You can of course place it wherever you wish. Colour illustration is on page 20. So you've got all the patterns just typed on the pages. Now what I would have said as I would have preferred the patterns with the pictures next to them because it's a bit fiddly to going back to see which jumper you actually are meant to be knitting. So it would have been better if the pictures were right next to their specific pattern but it looks it's still cool. And it looks really complicated too. If I manage to knit anything for this, then of course I will do a video. So, yeah. Also, so, 
Mm -hmm. You do get um, written instructions and you also get um, the charts as well. Neon Jumper. The current Doctor Who logo looks as if it is made of neon tubing and is widely used on books and comics. Put the series name and light on your jumper with a fairly discreet motif about 6 inches across and placed as a badge. If you prefer to shout your allegiance to the Doctor, then knit in a diamond pattern on page 25. This more subtle badge is Swiss Dawn, that is worked in duplicate stitch after the Ragland sleeve jumper is complete. It is very easy, especially for a small pattern made up of lines as this one is. Colour illustration, page 19. And then this photograph is of the TARDIS sleeping bag, which actually looks pretty cool. It's all quilted and looks very, very cosy, and it's in space. And there's the TARDIS. Oh, floating in space in the sleeping bag. Yay! Starbase Jumper. The famous and exciting Doctor Who music when the series is younger played against a whirling vortex an almost impossible pattern to reproduce in knitting and a, and a distinctly peculiar shape to wear. More recently, however, we have been greeted by swirling points of light gathering themselves into a constellation which gradually resolves itself into the Doctor's face. This process, caught at the stage where the face is discernible but still made of stars, makes a most exciting picture to knit. The stars are knitted here in white double knitting yarn and a fine silver yarn used together, but you could use white double knitting yarn on its own, or any metallic, preferably silver, yarn that knits to the same tension as the main yarn used for the jumper. So that's what it says on this page all about an established jumper. So there we have, so there, I think you could just see the established jumper behind the puppet theatre. They have constructed along with their Agador puppet, and I think that was their Crinoid puppet, and more puppets that are made that we've made to put in that puppet theatre, which is awesome. Yay! And then we have a nice rugged pose for the Davison Doctor. Yes, cricket. I look like Doctor. Who. Yes. Hmm. Very macho. And that is your pattern for the star based. Cricket Jumper. Peter Davison's fifth, or fifth incarnation of the Doctor considers himself rather sporting, and so the crick cricketing gear is most appropriate. The jumper and double knitting yarn can be used for real cricket too, of course, as well as for play acting, and is a smart as and is a sport comfortable fit. Oh, my words are difficult today. If you want to wear a more complete doctor costume, line the collar and face the opening of a white shirt with red ribbon or material and embroider question marks in red on the collar points. If you have a cream blazer or jacket, and if no one minds, bind the edges with a red braid. Ideally, this should be a long frock coat. But not many people wear these nowadays, of course. To finish off the outfit, make the stick of celery brooch and pin it on your lapel. Finally, decorate a white Panama-style hat with faintly spotted red ribbon. See? There we have the scarf. The whole idea of a book of patterns based on Doctor Who grew rather like the scarf itself must have grown from this piece of knitting which for many people symbolises the programme. Everyone from serious devotees of Doctor Who to people who have rarely watched is familiar with Tom Baker's flamboyant, seemingly endless striped scarf. Because it is so easy to knit, the scarf is an ideal beginner's project. So turn to the how to knit section and begin. So it tells you how to make the iconic scarf, which is awesome. Nissa's jacket. Nissa met up with the Doctor on Traken, when the Master caused various nasty things to happen to her father, Consul Tremass. She later became a charming and clever but innocent companion to both Tom Baker's and Peter Davison's regenerations of the Doctor. 
she first wore a delightful wine brown outfit, the top of which provided the inspiration for this jacket. It was not very easy to knit, because it is an unusual shape, with its leg and mutton sleeves, which are instantly very long in a rather medieval way, and its fitted bodice. The fronts meet almost edge to edge and curve away at the collar and hem, and really does have hems, not welts. The pale brown areas are actually randomly placed. One sleeve on the garment shown here has three areas of colour and the other sleeve has only one. You can place them wherever you wish, but if you prefer to follow a pattern, charts are given for guidance. So that's Nessa's jacket instructions. Then we have the little lad dressed up as Adric, which is awesome. And he's exploring and he's got his Adric outfit on. Yay, very stylish, stand on a beach in your stripy scarf. Yay, that bitch is awesome. <laughs> Romana's T-shirt Romana was one of the doctor's companions for two years and wore for some of her many episodes a delightful Edwardian style sailor suit. Nautical fashions have always been popular, so for your own version, you can wear either the four-ply striped t-shirt pattern deer or Romana's sailor top in fabric, or both. The t-shirt would look very good in other colours too, especially red and white, or you can knit it in a single colour. So that's Romana's t-shirt. Adric's tunic. Adric was a young companion from the planet Alzarius, who became very popular during the series, before he died helping to save the Earth from an attack by the Cybermen. During his time with the Doctor, he wore some splendid clothes, two of which are adapted here in this tunic and on page 65 as an anorak. The tunic is designed to be worn over a shirt, as it has a tight edge-to-edge fitting, and is in one multi-sized to fit children of up to about 12 years old. It could be worn complete with a string belt, to give an authentic Elzerian feel, or with any belt you choose. Adric was given the star pin as an award, and the instructions to make it are also given. That's cool. They have Romana's seal atop. Lady Romana... Ah! Lady... Lady Romana... Romana... Buratulendo. That's really bad. Romana Buratulendo. Usually, Dave, as Romana, is herself a Time Lord and has appeared in the series in two regenerations. In the second, she appeared in the sort of costume that young people many decades ago used to sport on the beach. Made very popular in Victorian times, the sailor suit or blouse, or just a sailor look, has proved to have remarkable staying power occurring again and again in fashion right up to today. This sailor top is designed to be used on top of the knitted t-shirt on page 55, which is the way Romana wore it but it is generously cut and could be worn over blouses, dresses or even jumpers if you wish. Is that from our seal top? Now we also have Tegan's boob tube. When Tegan Yavanka, an Australian air hostess, inadvertently stumbled upon the TARDIS, she became a favourite companion, in spite of, or perhaps because of, frequently losing her temper whenever things go wrong. Among her very glamorous clothes is this boob tube, which is made here of plain white fabric trimmed with rotary anglais strip, 
but which could be made in any fabric, lace or not, and could also be very could also very easily be given straps made with plain strips of fabric or ribbon. Because the top opens down the back, the straps could simply be fixed front and back. But if you wish, you could attach two lengths of ribbon for each strap and tie a bow on the shoulder. The boob tube is very easy to make, or would be an ideal project for a beginner, perhaps with a little help from her friends. Sewing pattern is on page 108. Shall I make the boob tube? That, that looks well. That doesn't look too difficult, actually. That's a sewing one. I could possibly make the boob tube. There I have a picture of a cuddly canine. It looks awesome. And he's hiding behind some flowers. And he's all cuddly. Adrix Anorak. In Forge Doomsday, when the forces of good are lined up against the evil of Bankins, Adric wears a splendid black space suit trimmed with quilted silver. There is not much call yet for space suits in ordinary wear. But the top half of the suit converts readily into a, sp into, a, into a spectacular anorak jacket, which makes any lad look like Adric. You can, of course, use other colours, and if you are making it for a biker, why not trim it with a reflective ribbon so that he or she will be seen at night? There's also a picture here of the TARDIS door tidy. You can make a whole TARDIS pocket in and you can keep all your things tidy. K9 toy. A cuddly computer? Why not? Certainly K9 has endeared himself to his fans in a way that no other piece of technical history could possibly have done. So now you can make K9 in two squashy forms. One to sit on and this one to take to bed for protection and advice in the night. He still has his datacom probe, his radio signal booster antenna, antenna and his tracking sensors even if they are slightly modified by being made of yarn instead of, obs instead of obscure metal alloys. He even has plenty of buttons to press, so that he can be programmed into being a child's companion. Maybe he could even be programmed to make the bed in the morning. Will he fit in well with your family? Affirmative. Colour illustration is on page 63. Yay. And you've got the pattern on that. Then we have this section called Nittermasty. One of the fascinations of Doctor Who throughout the series from the very beginning has been the spectacular collection of aliens and baddies. They range from high tech to low life, from massive to microscopic, and from psychological to mind boggling. Mind -boggling. It was very hard to choose which of this ghastly gallery to turn into puppets, but here is a selection. Axon. This particular horrid pile of red tree roots lumbered onto our screens in the claws of Axos and makes a splendid glove puppet capable of plenty of animation in spite of having no discernible face or features. Agador The curse of Paladon brought us Agador, a sort of intergalactic wild pig with very frightening tusks and claws. He turned out to be much nicer than he looks. Zygon Terror of the Zygons gave us earth creatures all sorts of problems. Scotland's most famous legend included when the Zygons were stranded at the bottom of Loch Ness. They are dirty, shiny, greenish grey and take their colour a great deal from the way the light falls on them. Time Lords in Action Time Lords, of whom the Doctor is one, live for an immeasurable time and appear in one regeneration after another. If you have an action man, you can create all the regenerations by dressing him in turn in these outfits, which convert him into whichever version of the Doctor you need for your game. There is even a pattern to turn him into another Time Lord, the Master, if you want a baddie. These costumes are fiddly to make, but using scraps they would be cheap to do, and would make a thoughtful, special and spectacular present which would give hours of pleasure. If you have several action men, you can choose blonde or dark-haired ones appropriate to the different costumes, but only one is really necessary, as after all, 
more than one version of the Doctor is rarely around at the same time, although you can of course use as many of your regenerated Doctor forms as you like in any games, plots and stories that you like. The Master has always been bearded, and the beard here was made by teasing out tiny pieces of dark yarn and gluing them on. This can be very difficult to remove, so only do it if you want a permanently hirsute action man. The basic patterns can also be adapted by using other colours for any other characters you would like, as the basic shirt and trousers are very simple and can be made from any material or yarn. All the versions of the Doctor have worn, have worn a traditional costume style jacket, often worn open. If you would like a modern jacket for a different character, add four stitches throughout to each front then the fronts will meet and you will be able to fasten them with pest studs or hooks. If adapting the pattern, always remember to make the clothes generous so that they are easy to put on. So it shows how to make a shirt, trousers, and there's also a photo here of the console floor pressing which looks awesome. And the photo of the big canine what you can sit on. It's all shiny. Yay. There we have a picture of one of the, the Netta Nasties and one of the action men all in his Doctor Who gear and the squishy TARDIS behind. Yeah. So it shows how to do all the different bits of the outfit. And it shows you all the different colours for each different Doctor. Yeti. The Yeti is an obvious choice for a cuddly toy, even if he is a baddie. Apparently, the first time the Yetis encountered the Doctor, they were so appealing that a conscious effort had to be made to make them more horrid. This one is so lovable, he must be a baby, if he can have such a thing as a baby Yeti. So it turns out to knit that until fluffy and that. I have a picture of the cuddly TARDIS which looks awesome I think yeah that's so cool it's all made out of denim which is, looks cool salary brooch Peter Davison's costume for the Doctor seems incomplete without his stick of salary so for fun you may like to make this one for yourself there are various ways of doing it you could use a real salary but that causes problems it dies for instance you get green fly instead of dandruff and persuading a pin to stay in a salary stamp is an excellent way of wasting an afternoon. People might even eat it. You could go for beautiful pottery, or composition, or moulded models, but few of, us, few of us have the skill. So here is a pattern to make a salary brooch from scraps of felt, which is much easier, lighter to wear, and infinitely less edible. I have a picture of the canine bag. Which looks always awesome. it's Kado with a strap on. And it's back. And it looks cute. K9 shoulder bag. K9 has always been a helpful and useful companion. What better way to keep him by your side could there be than to turn him into a shoulder bag? He has a shape that has always been reminiscent of a handbag anyway. But don't tell him. I don't think he would like it. Then it shows you how to make the bag. And you get that. TARDIS sleeping bag quilt. If you sleep in or under a TARDIS, you might wake up any time. This very simple version of the TARDIS has all you need, even doors that open in the middle, just like the real thing. It can be used as a bed cover, in which case it is open flat and reaches from the bottom of the bed to pillow height, making the bed look like a TARDIS, or it can be closed up the middle, making a generous sleeping bag. This TARDIS is made from ready-made quilting, blah blah blah. So there's your instructions for making the TARDIS sleepy bag or quilt. That's awesome. Uh, then you can make the TARDIS tidy. The idea of a tidy TARDIS seems a contradiction in terms. The real thing is certainly not very tidy in its habits. On the other hand, the inside of the TARDIS does seem to contain everything, so there is an excuse, if you need one, for making this door hanging covered in pockets which hold a surprising amount of bits and bobs toys and hoovian ephemera, hankies and things that would go up the hoover, 
Doctor Who comics and hair grips. It is designed to hang from a hook on the back of the door, but you can of course hang it from any wall or piece of furniture that you wish. Bearing in mind that it is about five feet high and narrow enough to clear the knob on an ordinary door, and an ideal material would be denim. Any strong material would do of course, but denim, as well as being strong, has exactly the faded blue colour of the early 1960s Metropolitan Police telephone box, in which form the TARDIS has remained, by mistake, since the chameleon circuit failed on a visit to Earth at that time. Many of the Doctor's adventures have been enlivened by problems with the TARDIS, but your untidiness problems at least should be solved by this version. Is it hard to make TARDIS tidy? Console floor cushion. The control console is the very heart of the TARDIS. From it all, the mind boggling functions of the time machine are originated. The guidance systems, the drive systems, the environmental control, and all the navigation. These functions are powered by a wonderfully complicated collection of readout screens, displays, controls, visual display units, mechanisms, and computers. Imagination can run riot with ideas, dreams, and games. Based on the things with such technical, based on the things which technical wizardry would allow one to do, this floor cushion takes the basic hexagon of the console, makes it squashy enough to sit, lie, or fall on. It is then covered with buttons to press, screens to gaze at, grills to speak into, and leaves to push, so that you can simply sit on it in a fairly dignified way. Or, if you are young enough, either in years or at heart, you can have endless fun with the adventures that pressing some of those buttons will lead you to and rescue you from. Rescue you from. So that shows all the instructions how to make the TARDIS console floor cushion. TARDIS cushion. Maybe you will be able to use this cushion, rather like a legendary magic carpet, to fly anywhere in the universe in any time zone. Maybe. Even if it does not have quite such spectacular powers, it is certainly fun to play with, and practical and comfortable to use, so why not make your own TARDIS? This TARDIS took about 3 kilograms of washable toy stuffing, but you could use fiber TARDIS, polystyrene bead or chop foam, or any safe stuffing material you like. If the cushion is for a small child, be especially sure that the stuffing is non-toxic, washable and not too heavy. This TARDIS is ideal for carrying around and sitting on in front of the television to watch the latest episode of Doctor Who but little ones will stagger under the weight of it, or you will have to carry it around for them all the time if it is too heavy. Like the other two versions of the TARDIS in this book, the black lines here are made with stitched on tape. If you prefer, stitched on a thick black yarn instead, as this, as this would only certainly be cheaper. So there's lots of cost-cutting advice to whilst you're making your Doctor Inspired creations. K9 Cushion K9 makes a terrific cushion a lovely, rounded, comfy version of the animated tin box we all know and love. So, Ed Strasson has made a cuddly canine cushion. It's also an Oswegian sock. We have so a nasty. Here are more of the delicious Doctor Who baddies. These are sewn and are very simple to make. A fabric love puppet is one of the most basic toy ideas and they are so satisfying to use that it defy anyone with any scrap of childhood left in them to put one on without animating it a little, making it wave or pull a face. The pattern that follows is only a basic guide to making your puppets. Your imagination and the use of available, material, available materials can do the rest. So it tells you how to do that get started on the basic puppets, then it tells you about how to customise them into particular creatures. Sea Devil These reptilian marine creatures, alone or in cahoots with the equally scaly Silurians, seem determined to take over the Earth, which would make for some exciting puppet plays. Mandrel Like many Doctor Who baddies, the Mandrels have a certain charm, in spite of their distinctly antisocial behaviour. And although they are part of a nightmare in Eden, they are appealing enough to make a delightful puppet. Then you can make Cybermats, cuddly Cybermats. 
when an overambitious team of archaeologists decided to excavate the tomb of the Cybermen, they released a flurry of metallic wood lice called Cybermats, which, despite their rather charming appearance, have very nasty habits, which can have fatal consequences for their enemies, but they do make very satisfying toys, if only because of their holdable shape and they would also fit in rather well with a puppet show or play. You can, if you wish, scale the basic patterns down and make tiny cybermats to use with the Action Men versions of the Doctor. If you make cybermats for a very young fan, use circles of felt for the eyes and tufts of wool for the antenna for, safe, for safety stick. And then here's all a lovely group portrait all proudly showing off their Doctor Who gear on a big pile of sand seemingly at a quarry. Very traditional. And this section is all the patterns you need to create all your sewing sewed items. These are all the patterns that you can photocopy, print out. Puppet theatre. Puppets are and always have been exciting things on several levels. Traditional puppets have always been a serious art form in many countries. Think of the lovely wooden German ones and the beautiful Indian silhouette puppets. It is possible to become as involved in the fate of the characters in a puppet show as it is in that of real life actors. There are few people who are unmoved when watching small children roaring with excitement at a Punch and Judy show, or do not or who do not worry about the eventual fate of Pinocchio. At a more simple level, puppets have, for children at home, the charm of doing it exactly as they are told, saying whatever words they are given, as well as helping to create stories and plays. For these plays, it is fun to have a theatre. There are many simple ways of doing this. The puppets can simply appear over the top of the settee, chairs or a table, while their owners, operators, hide below, if you are lucky enough to acquire an enormous cardboard box or carton, the children can be inside it, and the puppets can appear over the top. A bit tricky this, though, if there is a cast of thousands. More elaborate theatres can be built in wood, by capable dads or mums in the, in the style of the traditional seaside punch and jude booth. But this is very ambitious. A more simple compromise is to use an old-fashioned clothes dryer area, if you have one, the kind that opens. <clears throat> the kind that opens out into three sections. Drape the sides and the bottom of the middle section with towels or sheets and operate the puppets over the top of these. This theatre that is shown in the book has several advantages. It is very easy and cheap to make but looks spectacular. It can also be made very satisfactorily by the children themselves. With some help with the initial cutting and because it is still a box, it makes a useful container in which to store the puppets and other props between the shows. If parents want to make the theatre as a surprise present at Christmas, for example, it even makes a super box to hand over all those other peasants in. So you can make your puppet theatre as well as to put your puppet nasties on. So do I show you your puppet nasties? And then you have the acknowledgement. Then you have the acknowledgements page. And an acknowledgement goes to BBC, BBC the Acorn Computers Limited for the use of the BBC microcomputer. So that takes me back. Oh. So that is the Doctor Who pattern book. So I hope you will be inspired to acquire a copy of the Doctor Who pattern book and sew on it some creations. So, yay! I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Bye.